When I was 21 years old, I went with my brother and some friends to a concert in North Texas. The experience was great and accompanied with loads of alcohol and drugs as one would expect. My brother and I weren't exactly big on drugs though, but being born and raised in South Texas, we could handle our fair share of liquor. Now the reason I'm explaining the alcohol is because it is the only thing that could possibly explain the experience I encountered when heading back to South Texas. While driving on the highway, my Google Maps app advertised a shortcut. Save 26 minutes by taking an alternate route. Normally, we wouldn't go for these little 5 minute shortcuts, but this one was a 26 minute shortcut, so naturally we took it. The only problem was, unbeknownst to us, there were no gas stations leading down this route, and we only had an eighth of a tank left in our car, which led to us being stranded. Naturally, being the oldest, my brother took responsibility and decided to take the three mile walk up the road to the nearest gas station. Before leaving, my brother reminded me to not wander off and avoid interaction with strangers. Yes, I know. I'm not a kid, Eric. Just making sure. Also, James, remember I have a gun in the trunk in my backpack in case anything does happen. My brother always kept a gun in his car, as a just-in-case thing. He'd always tell me, better to have it and not need it, than need it and not have it. I assured him I'd be fine, and he walked off. I sat in the heat of the car for about 45 minutes until I decided to get out and sit on the trunk. A little while later, I saw in the distance what looked like my brother walking my way. God damn, that was fast. What, did he run the whole way? I told myself. The person walked up to me and I could immediately tell it wasn't my brother after all as it got closer. Eventually, it walked right up to the back of the car and talked to me. Ready to go? It said while lifting a full jerry can. What? D do I know you? I replied confused. James, it's me, Eric. Stop messing around. What is this, a joke? I know you aren't my brother. I jumped down from the trunk of the car and kept my eyes fixed on this man. I quickly noticed he never blinked. Not once. Just kept direct eye contact with me at all times. Um, so where the fuck is my brother? Fuck, I knew I should have gotten a closer look, it said. In an instant, the figure closed in on the gap between us and swung. That was the last thing I remembered, before waking up cramped in a tight space, which I quickly realized was the trunk. My hands and feet were bound, and I was gagged. The noise that woke me was the voice of my brother. Hey, it was a long walk, but I'm back. Brought some snacks and water, too. Thank you, a voice responded. Is something wrong, man? I heard my brother ask. No, I'm fine. You sure, man? You've been staring at the dash. If you're getting sick, you better not puke in my car. I'm fine. The voice, that I could now distinguish as my own, replied. I sat in the trunk, puzzled, trying to piece together what was going on. Was I having an out-of-body dream? Did I take something? The car roared to life, 
and I heard my brother let out a small woo of joy. Alright man, let's get going. But first things first, play some music. I would, but I need to charge my phone. There was a pause. Then I heard the other voice reply to Eric. Um, I don't know where my phone is. All good, man. I'll just call it. Within seconds, my phone rang from my pocket. Your phone's in the trunk, man. Go get it. The trunk lid then flew open, and I felt a rush of fresh air, and the warm sunlight hit my back. I knew it was my chance. I rolled my body out and felt my wallet slip out of my pocket as I fell into the ground while making as many grunts I could and slapped the dirt with my bound hands and feet. The commotion I created worked as I heard my brother get out of the car and yell. Okay, I knew something was going on. So what the fuck is up? Who the hell are you? You know damn well who I am, Eric. Yup, just as I thought. I turned over and saw my brother draw his gun and heard two gunshots. My ears rang and eventually I felt consciousness slip away as I felt my brother pick me up. When I woke up, I jumped and quickly looked around. Whoa, you okay, man? You have a bad dream? My brother asked. Um, no, but what, what happened? Didn't you shoot someone? My brother's face turned serious as he stared at me. Then he quickly laughed. Man, you really need to stop watching all of those crime shows on Netflix. He laughed. The rest of the trip went smooth, and I began to realize I just had a bad dream. That was until I went to get my bags from the trunk. I picked up my suitcase and backpack, and sitting on the trunk floor was my wallet. How did that get there? I thought to myself. Then I remembered the dream. When I squirmed out of the trunk, my wallet fell from my pocket. I quickly felt around and looked for any more evidence that this dream was real. In the corner of the trunk, I found a silver spent 45 casing. Just like the self-defense hollow point rounds my brother uses. I'm not sure what to make of it, but this pretty much confirms that what I felt wasn't a dream. The wallet, casing, and the soreness of being hit and falling out of the car were all enough to prove to myself it was no dream. I don't know what it was that attacked me and my brother nor can I guess why my brother seemed to know whatever it was. But I need to find out what's going on. I'll supply updates if I do find anything. Also, forgive the lack of indenting on paragraphs and any small errors. I wrote this out on my phone. I'll supply updates if I do find anything. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you want to see more, let me know in the comments below, and tell me what you thought of this narration. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for updates, and if you'd like to get early videos, shoutouts, and much much more, I'd appreciate it if you check out my Patreon page. 
It's a place where you can help support my channel while getting awesome rewards in the process, and every pledge helps out a ton, no matter the size. So if you'd like to see all the rewards I offer and consider becoming a patron, it'd mean a ton to me if you'd click the link in the description and just check it out. And don't forget to show some love to the amazingly talented authors who make these narrations possible. Have a good night, everybody. Cheers.